Hey, how is it going? Ladies and gentlemen, it is Frank. How is it going? I said it twice. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I'm here ready to bring you a, another little chapter of, our, <laughs> of the PPL. This is team prep. Uh, and I'm presenting you the team uh, I will use against Norwich Kitty. Uh, Jack's team, the Dumb Fanatic's team, which I won't be battling surprisingly because at the time he had to leave, I think, um, so he couldn't make his prep. So instead of him, I'm facing Lars from the Borussia Dortmund in the GBA. So, and Lars is taking Jack's place basically um, on this week. So I have to face Lars. And uh, that is. Annoying, uh, you know. Uh, it's hard. It's going to be a hard week. It's the third week in a row that we have to do with Latias, Latios, and now this week Mega Latios. So we've dealt with the Mega Latios that actually does some damage to my team <laughs> three fucking week in a row, and it's uh, this week is a weird matchup. I think it's quite kind of even. Although he has a very hard, um, like very difficult core to break with Megalatios, Karmory and Florgus. Plus he can add up Gastron on that and that's going to be a problem. So with the team I have I had to kind of break the core and try to uh, s uh, make it uh, not eff that effective and try to make uh, this core not being able to recover. That's basically one of them. She has a lot of recovery on those cores with wishes and, you know, roost or recover on Latios uh, and also has roost. So he could have both if he wants, I think. I'm not sure actually. <laughs> but anyways. <coughs> uh, he also uh, does have a very some fast mons as well that are quite dangerous with a lot of uh, potential um, coverage that also damage my team and every team as a matter of fact and what I've seen though is that he has a pretty strange we uh, weird speed cap on his team because he has some things that are very fast but then the rest are very slow so some mons don't, don't even need that much speed on my team is the case of Snorlax right here um, but yeah, uh, not Snorlax, Entei I meant, I don't know why I said Snorlax, but anyways, um, let's see what Jack's team is first. As you can see, on the left, on the right side of the screen, we have Megalatios, Scarvery, Florgus, Nidoking, Zorwark, Heliolis, Gastrodon, Darmanitan, and Hitmonlee. Now the first thing I thought as I saw this team is that uh, he only has one or two things to take powerful fire tap attacks, which is Megalatios and Gastrodon. So uh, directly I thought to put uh, Ante in there as the first option was a band set, but then I decided to change it to charcoal um, because I can switch up moves with Toxic and Ispit um, and, the, and my fire steps. Um, they said it's kind of bulky, it's just to take uh, Moonblasts for Florgus, um, pretty, actually very comfortably with this, uh, just taking and then threaten something, uh, threaten his team with a sacred fire, um, and try to get burns around his team basically. Extreme speed, uh, very necessary, especially against his frail super fast mods that he, he's got, he's got Heliolis, Zoroark. And even Hinmonlee that could unburden me. And we will need those super fast priority that outspeeds everything else. <coughs> so I think Entei is pretty good this week. Pretty sure it's going to have uh, some nice. So, uh, some nice. He will do well. I, I trust in him. Uh, I trust Entei. He will do pretty well. We do have Toxic on this, as you can see. It's the second time we're bringing Toxic on Entei. He actually, he actually works pretty well. Um, toxic allows me to um, hit on the switches the Megalatios and the possible Gastrodon, uh, very possible Gastrodon actually. Um, so yeah, having to force Florigus to 
try to do its recovery thing also works well because it means a switch for Ante or Golbat. Uh, Golbat is meant to deal with his courts as well, so you will see. But this is the Ante set. Charcoal also, the plan with this is to bluff the choice band during the whole battle. And if I can bluff the choice band well, we can surprise him with some uh, move change right here. Uh, also, you may be seeing that I do have two fire stabs in Sacred Fire and Flare Blitz. The reasoning behind that is that um, he just, he does have the floor gas as you've seen and the gas was on, so he has like a couple of switches and a lot of wish protect. So it's quite easy that he is able of uh, stalling me out of Sacred Fires if the battle, battle turns out to be long. Um, so that's... that's uh, why do you have flare blades on the, my back pocket? Uh, I'm not planning on using flare blades too much, but it's a safe option since I do not need any other move on this set that much. Uh, like Stone Edge is not gonna hurt his team that much. Like it's not, it's it's not that useful like, this week at least. Not for the Pokemon, but this week. So I think I'm pretty good going with a dual uh, fire stab right here. Of course, it's very risky to use Flare Blitz because, you know, with rocks plus Flare Blitz, we've taken a lot of residual damage. So I have to be wise when I use those moves. My next Mon is Golbat. This time we're using kind of a Stall Break Golbat. Um, Stall Breaking Golbat with Taunt, Roost, he's a defogger of the team. We kind of need a defogger with Entei Run, I feel. Um, could come in clutch if needed to be. Uh, and Golbat is packing the Super Fang, Taunt, Roost, and Default. The plan with this Golbat is not to kill anything, but actually to uh, avoid uh, the. the. what's it called? Um, Florgus and Skarmory to Roost and Wish Protect on these things and get also good damage on switches with Super Fang uh, doing 50% of the damage that the Monis have at the moment. So, of course, nice recovery, Defog, Taunt, and Super Fang. They, it actually stops Skarmory and Florgus. Skarmory can do anything with two Golbat. He can Braver if he wants, but it's going to do like 20%. Um, of course, Florgus, even though I'm not special defensive with Moonblast, not gonna hurt me either. Uh, I can Roost on it, can Taunt it, Roost on it. And while they're Taunt, I know they're going to attack. They're going to go for Braver or Iron Head or Moonblast, so I can get the appropriate switchings with Entei. Um, or any of these mods like um, Rotom or Cobalion. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, on Golbat and Entei, I do have 12 speed EVs because I really didn't know where to put them. I decided to put them on speed so I don't get speed creep by anything on his team that he wants to. Uh, so that's nice. Just just a little bit. Uh, just not get speed creep for just in case. Uh, it's, never, it's always good to have those. <laughs> Then we do have the <laughs> the very um, that's a pretty pretty cool set this week, uh, and there's a reason for that. I love this set. It's a Scald Ice Beam Toxic Substitute Offensive Starmie with some HP. Uh, all right, so let's explain this set. This set's pure cash. I love this set, and I am sure. If I am able to use it well during the battle, it's going to put in work. Now, what is the explanation for this set? So, we have Frost Cold, you know, Stab, Water, Burns, always good. Um, and Ice Beam. It's called an Ice Beam hurts almost everything on his team. He hurts Megalatius with Ice Beam, he hurts Skarmory decently well with Scald. It hurts, it doesn't hurt Florgus that much. We can, uh, you know, we have things to deal with Florgus. We'll already show you both within Entei and Gol Golbat. So that is solved. Um, you can't expect the Mount to hit everything on his team. He does damage against the Hillary's with Ice Beam. Decent damage at least. Um, so it's always nice to get those residuals on it. He does have a Gastrodon as well. Uh, now, Scald and Ice Beam doesn't hurt Gastrodon too much, uh, then Scald does a lot of damage to Darmanitan, and of course it does a lot of damage to him only as well. Um, and possibly, you know, there's a chance to get the burns. As you've seen though, 
Um, he does have the floor gates, which I already showed you a couple of answers. And he does have as well the Gastrodon. Now, Storm against Grassnot, and I know it, but Grassnot on Gastrodon only does it's only it's 60 it's 60 base power, so it's, I could use HP Grass for that. But that took uh, takes away one of my IVs uh, right here. It will be only 30, so it, I do a little bit of <laughs> less damage, I think. But that's not the important part. The important part is that I will have a move that is just for Gastrodon and pretty much anything else because, you know, even on the Sweetens, uh, I can't get, like, safe damage with gas with the grass knot if he starts switching around so I thought it was kind of a more of a pain in the ass than anything else plus gastrodon might be carrying the the mirror coat if he decides to bring that so if I grass knot and need special defensive for assault vest I will not kill because it doesn't do too much damage at all uh, it's 60 base power as I said so it does like 80% I think it's quite a lot of damage, but it's not enough and It's risky Now What is a thing a set that can damage more his whole team and also deal with gasoline now that is substitute toxic starmy and There's a reason why I also have subs the first thing is so to get I can get up subs on gasoline um, quite easily Especially on Scald, get the free Toxic on them and spread the Toxic on some mons of his team. Uh, uh, but also, Substitute allows me to do a couple of more things. Because it's not just for Gastrodon, of course. The first thing is just to... I can get the sub on Latios, since this is a set that it's made to outspeed Latios by one point. And with that, I outspeed Zoroark as well and Heliolisk. So... You can get very fast subs with this, we can uh, use those subs to sponge Drakers if needed to be, at least one, and then proceed to switch your Pokemons around. <coughs> yeah, so that's good. <sighs> and the substitute is also here to try to dodge uh, Zoroark Sucker Punches. Because if he goes for Sucker Punch and I get off a sub, then I have I can get a lot of damage with Scald. Or Ice Beam on the next turn um, when he breaks the sub. Because I definitely outspeed, so I lose nothing by going for sub if I'm in front of a Zoroark. If I already <coughs> managed to know um, what if he is Zoroark after the illusion things and stuff. <coughs> Sorry about that. And yeah, dodges Sucker Punches. It can sponge Draco Meteors. I can Toxic Stall, Gastrodon. And in the end, it's just pretty good. And I can also shop on Skarmory, by the way. The problem with Skarmory is that it may have Whirlwind or Roar, so... Uh, it's not always a good idea to shop on that. But yeah, this is the plan I do have with Starmie. Uh, since I'm lacking a little bit of recovery, I decided to this week go for with a bulky kind of Gardevoir. Um, here it is. <laughs> uh, just Hyper Voice, Psy Shock, Stabs, and then Protect Wish, we can get a Protect off, and, you know, uh, get the Mega Evolve with the Protect directly. I am running Trace again, it works very well against his team, because he does have Gas to Done, I can switch that on in uh, Skulls and get the Storm Drain, plus one Hyper Voice. I'm pretty sure to hit KO's his whole team, even the Resisted Mons. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, then we do have Psyshock, just uh, it helps taking down Florgis. And Helio, it does more damage to Helio, it's not that much. And, but in any case, uh, it's, it's there to go for some neutral hits on the Switch Ins. Um, Hyper Voice still does very good damage to most members of his team, anyways. So it's always nice to have. It's, uh, it's there. Not going to be taking a very strong role this week, and we do have some speed EVs on this. Enough speed to outspeed uh, what's called. Uh, I think it's Hitmonlee without uh, Unburden. Once we Mega Evolve, of course, not now. But yeah, just Jolly Hitmonlee without Unburden. That is the plan. Um, so he can, like, 
you can just jolly, you can just poison jab me and just do some strong damage to me, and that's bad. Um, and yeah, why why do I have Wish inside this week? Since I've seen he has a very safe switching and a strong core, um, I'm quite sure he's going to be bringing Florgus or Skarmory on this. Now this is a good opportunity to set up wishes on those switches, because Skarmory would just switch in on this and just try to go for Iron Head probably, or even Braver will do some decent damage. But I'm sure this will be, he will be bringing Iron Head. So if I can get Wish pass to Entei, uh, that'd be more than great, <laughs> honestly. Uh, so yeah, this is trying to, since Entei may have his uh, survivability hindered by rocks, it's very nice to try to pass wishes to him, since he does have mons that will definitely switch on Guard War that can't deal well with Entei. So that provides me some safe switches for Entei, and of course, recovery on my Guard War itself if needed to be. Now, uh... This is all pretty good, I have to pause it a little second, because I'm about to be interrupted, so I'll be right back. So yeah, what I was saying, just to get free switches on the rest of the month. Sorry about the interruptions, uh, every time man, every fucking time. Anyways, so this is the, the first four members of the squad. Now, we're going to the fifth member, fifth member of the squad, and it's a offensive momentum Cobalion. Uh, we do have enough speed to outspeed Jolly Zoroark, and so we can just kill it with close combat if needed to be. So that's nice. Um, the move set of choice stabs Iron Head close combat. Iron Head to kill quickly the um, what's called Florgus. Got some Brazil. We can get some cheap, pretty, pretty decent damage to Nido King as well. And you know, basically, it's the damage. That's just it. Then we do have close combat, of course. Um, it hits decently well, Skarmory. Uh, kills Zoroark. Kills Heliolisk, which I we don't also outspeed. And we can we can do some damage to Gastrodon on the switches as well, if we need it to be. And of course, we do have Vol Switch. He's a stealth locker of the team as well. The Vol Switch is to get some momentum. It's very crucial to give uh, to have that. Um, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Pivoting around will be crucial with the, for this mod. Um, it's basically its role this week to pivot around and give me some nice uh, momentum. That's pretty much it. That's how it goes. Um, it will probably... I don't know. It, it's hard for this mod to get a kill this week. But his role is not that. He's more of a support role this week. Uh, Volsic and Stealth Rock. Are going to be helping me a lot, especially because he has some sort of slow mons, and that's nice. And of course, rocks uh, kind of need it to get residual damage on the Skarmory and Florgus if I taunt them and such. So get from residual damage, and of course, if he brings Darmanitan, uh, you can get 25% on that every time he comes in. So it's nice, and you can break potential sashes on him and leave he's a sash of burden. Or Zoroark as well if he's packing the Sash. Or even Nido King as well. So that's pretty nice to have Rocks this week, I feel, because he has so a lot of mons that could carry Sash. And I don't know. I think, I think that's pretty much it for Cobalion. Pivot around, take hits, um, and just give me the momentum I need. And give me the appropriate switchings for this. Um, now the team I have, it does have some kind of problem with Heliolisk. Um, so we are packing very very special defensive Rotom. Uh, we do have some speed in here that I... Uh, I think it's for non-speedy Nido King and you know to avoid um, and also Hitmonlee I think as well. Uh, but if, if it's uninvested that is. So that's pretty... that's basically for uh, because I don't get um, speed creep as well. So that's it's good too. This thing is to basically take hits from Helios all day and paint split on it, recover on it, ball switch on it, and basically get momentum. His role is also to take Iron Heads or even Brave Birds coming from uh, Skarmory, paint split on it as well, or just kill it with ball switch, honestly. His team only has a ground type, he does have two ground types, that is. The first one being Gastrodon, which I can just kill with Leaf Storm, which is nice. 
And the second one, which is a little bit more scary, is Nidoki, which I can't uh, leave Storm on it that comfortably. Uh, we're packing the Kebia Berry. Uh, if you didn't know, the Kebia Berry is the house the damage taken from the super effective poison type attacks. Now, that is perfect against Nidoking, because even though Nidoking can have Ice Beam, we can leave those, for sure. And the only thing we can't leave is uh, a Sludge Wave coming from it, or Poison Jab if it's physical, that doesn't really matter. Um, the plan is to take those, uh, when the time comes, of course, I'm not going to take those with no use. I'll try to take those when it's looking at low HP and just leaf storm it. Leaf storm here even do some decent damage. Uh, leaf storm does hurt Nido King a lot, even though I'm not offensive. Um, so yeah, it's very important to keep this mon. Uh, if it dies, it will be hard for me to play. Um, because it just takes heat from so many things on his team, and the Prince Prick is so useful. And then we do have the Thunder Wave in... It's always nice to have that in the back pocket, uh, to T with the Unburden, Hitmonlee, Darmanitan, or Zoroark as well. Um, and of course Megalatios, hindering its speed is always very nice. So. Now that we've established what is the, the team, what the team does, uh, I will definitely try to predict what Lars is going to bring from Jack's team. And I think I'm going to make the prediction. He's going to bring Megalatios, Skarmory, Florgis, Zoroark, Gastrodon, and Nidoking. Latios, Skarmory, Florgis, Zoroark, Heliolisk, and Nidoking. Uh, yeah, no, I think he's gonna bring Gastrodon. Uh, let's say it again. What did I say the first time? <laughs> I forgot. Now, this is the official prediction. It could be some of these little variations, but the team is going to be looking like that. He doesn't have that many mons anyways, so it's easy to predict what he's going to bring, but yeah. Latios for sure. Latios does well against my team with all the coverage it gets. Especially he gets Shadow Ball. Uh, even though Mega Latios is very versatile and can be mixed, can be like... D dance and a lot of stuff that I don't really. I, I can't really expect everything coming from Latios, basically. Um, Skarmory and Florgis, it's a fantastic wall core. It's going to be very, very hard to take them. And he obviously, obviously he has no reason to not bring those almost every week. <laughs> he, like, they do well against most of the teams, anyways. Uh, thank god I do have Entei for that. Um, Nidoking can be useful, his coverage actually hurts most of the teams in the league, uh, mine included, ground hurts me, poison ground hurts me, and then he, do, he can have like t bolts, sucker punches, and, and stuff like that. And Zoroark, always nice to have, um, I think Zoroark could be very dangerous against my team, especially the mix said life or said sucker punch hurts me. Um, it's a good way to deal with my Stami, uh, if, if he does have set Sucker Punch. Uh, Framethrower and Sludge Bomb uh, are also coverage moves that are very dangerous for my team. Um, so it's it's a scary mon. Heliolisk, of course, scary as well. Um, it's hard for my team to take uh, Specs Hyper Voices. Uh, especially when Rotom dies, we need, definitely need Rotom to deal with uh, Heliolisk. Because uh, I think Rotom is the only thing that can kind of take hits from Heliolisk well. We can take uh, Hyper Voices if it's not Specs, uh, I think. Gastrodon, he may bring Gastrodon. Uh, he definitely can bring Gastrodon because I, the simple fact that I do have Entei on my team may force him to bring that. Also, it's it does leave a hit from a Starmie. It does well against most of the team, against... Uh, Cobalion as well, so yeah, I do need answers for that as well, and I don't think he's going to be bringing Darm and Hitmonlee this week uh, at all. I've shown my bulk with Hippo, I do have Hippo in my roster, um, so that's why I don't think it's very useful for him to bring those, even though Darmanitan gets Grass Knot, I don't think he's going to be doing that. Uh, if he does, well, props for Lars, 
he may, but I don't think he will. So the team, yeah, it's going to be more or less like that. Latios, Carbory, Florges, Zorwark, um, Gastron, Heliolisk, or instead of Zorwark, Nidoking, or instead of Heliolisk, Nidoking, some, some uh, small variations with that. So that's the team I'm predicting. That's the rant over. That is it. Hopefully you have enjoyed my team. What do you think is the best answers uh, for the Dumb Fanatics team? Uh, we have it watching on on the screen right now. And you just tell me what do you think of the team? What would you do? And what do you think he's going to bring? And what are, will be the results? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to me for almost half an hour. And I love you. Bye bye. <laughs>